If you don't believe me, would you believe a doctor? Okay. Remember, testosterone is anabolic in men and in women, so it helps reduce body fat, it helps protect lean muscle. Okay, now, you know, I think we're in the green room, right? And I say, you know, I read books about testosterone, like it's a miracle for right. certain women. Right. And you chimed in and said, oh yeah, I see it in my practice. I see that in my practice. Other women you see that have a lot of stress in their life, they come in, what I tend to see is they have high cortisol levels, which is the stress hormone, and they have low testosterone. So you have to balance their hormones. You have to lower the cortisol levels. You have to bring up the testosterone, but it may take a little bit more time, but we do absolutely see dramatic differences. That interview talks more about the benefits for libido in women and testosterone. But for us with MS, the true powerhouse of testosterone is myelin creation, restoring what has been lost. Studies conducted on myelin and nerve fibers reveals that oligodendrocyte progenitor cells, the cells responsible for making myelin actually increase with age, not decrease. That suggests that myelin production can occur at any point throughout life, even in spite of our neurodegenerative diseases like MS. Further studies have shown that the act of repairing myelin show what's needed. Action potentials generated by weightlifting. Hey, it's Steve. My video I made recently about sex hormones got me thinking. A deeper dive into the subject. I realized testosterone really made, made me realize what powerhouse really is. As I said, weightlifting and the action potentials it creates is one of the best ways to ignite remyelination. Testosterone is a pivotal ingredient of all of that. It will not only stop MS progression, but it will keep our neurons firing quickly and efficiently in the central nervous system. It is a trickle-down effect. It stops MS symptoms. And I know this because this happened to me and it can happen to you too. I've spent years wave loading, but recently I made a change, a little one. I feel I struck upon something that has drastically changed things. <sighs> what I do now is lift heavy. That is imperative. I still wave load, but only two weights rather than four. I aim to do it all within 30 to 45 minutes. And that includes 10 minutes of super maximal interval training on my rowing machine. If I work out beyond 45 minutes, I stop producing testosterone and start producing cortisol. And getting back, to what the good doctor said at the beginning of this video, cortisol works against the beneficial effects of testosterone. <sighs> what a relief, in a way. No more long drawn out workouts, and I maximize testosterone levels and minimize cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone, which is bad for myelin restoration. The aim should be to lift heavy enough that your body is put under maximum action potential generation. That means getting out of your comfort zone. For me, I interpret that as my last reps, I am lifting so heavy 
Sometimes I can't complete that last four reps. But that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I'm pushing my body to its absolute limit. I'm going to stay on that thin line of failure. Once I get comfortable, I load up even more. Even more heavy, heavy weight. Weight training is the number one way to boost testosterone levels naturally. It stimulates a big anabolic response that sparks, rem sparks remyelination. Hmm, I'm wondering. What are your thoughts? Are you lifting heavy? Any tips you want to share with us? Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. Until the next one.